So sometimes the best updates to come to Nintendo Switch are the ones that Nintendo doesn't even talk about. So as you can see here, I am on the eShop on Nintendo Switch. And you might notice that there is a new option on the left. That being Games on Sale. And this isn't a surprise. Obviously there was going to eventually be sales on the games in the eShop. Uh, and there had to be a way to find them easily. And Nintendo plans to run discounts. And heck, there might even be an exclusive tab eventually for uh, discounts for Nintendo Switch Online subscribers. But obviously this is just a really important update to Switch. Because game sales are a big deal a lot of people don't buy games until they go on sale and on the switch the switch's eShop, we just have to admit it's not very good uh it has the basic structure down but beyond the bare bones basics it's missing a lot of stuff so let's just go into some of the things on eShop that i feel could get better and why i'm pleased about the games on sale section so when we go to recent releases i don't really think there's anything wrong with the releases here right they they have about oh let's see here let's just count up the top of my head i'm not even sure 3 6 9 12 15 18 21 24 games before you can go to view all and you can even see i have some of them purchased like golf story down here i cannot suggest golf story enough whoops but yeah it's I, I think this is mostly fine. Uh, it's just going to be like the 20 plus or so uh, most recent releases. And that doesn't bother me. What I like is that they don't separate. This is something I know some people complain about. But they don't separate AAA releases from indies. They fairly treat every single game that releases digitally as being worth a spot. And it's based on which games came out most recently. Now, Flame of the Flood is the most recent release. Yono also recently came out. But yeah, it's just really, really nice when you see some of these top tier games listed next to AAA games. I'm like, look, here is FIFA 18 or uh, Unlimited World over here, One Piece, and surrounded by Golf Story and Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. It's just, it's. I think it's a great way to gain exposure because some people might head to the eShop and be like, hey, look, I want to get Super Mario Odyssey. And all of a sudden, right next to it, they might see games like The Flame and the Flood or the Fire Emblem Warriors when that releases as well. But it's just, I think, a nice way to treat games fairly. Like, all of them are on equal footing. Uh, because, honestly, I think the hardest thing I have when talking about AAA games and indie titles is that people don't act like those games are on equal footing. And I think that's just wrong. I think they are on equal footing and should be treated as such. Uh, indie titles have essentially become the new B-tier of video games. And there are many B-tier video games, while I grew up, that many thought were better than AAA games. And just like there's some indie titles that people think are legit better. I mean, Stardew Valley, uh, just, just an excellent example. There was SteamWorld Dig 2, which I don't think is a, a recent release now at this point. It's crazy thinking. That game just came out recently, and it's already off of the list. That goes to show you the wealth of content on here. So I actually think Nintendo did a good job with the recent releases listing. But beyond that, it can be difficult to find certain games. So, you know, you, you have your bestsellers list. Just just kind of a requirement of any online shop. It's good to know what people are buying. Uh, it kind of helps you give suggestions for games. If you're not sure what games are good on Switch, you can essentially go to the bestsellers list and be pretty happy with the selections there. I mean, Stardew Valley is widely considered to be an excellent game. Golf Story, I, I can't sing the praises enough. We know Axiom Verge is amazing. Sonic Mandy is awesome. Overcooked is really fun, especially in multiplayer. There's the aforementioned SteamWorld Dig 2. Uh, generally, the games you're going to find on here are going to be worth your time. Now, uh, I, you guys know my feelings on Mario Bros., but uh, generally, all these games are good. Even FIFA, for my criticisms of it, uh, is generally a good game. You're going to find good... Well, wow. Breath of the Wild was a launch game, and it's still among the top 15 bestsellers. That's that's impressive. Breath of the Wild, man. It's the game that just keeps on giving. But I don't have any issues with that. Then you have the coming soon section. Again, not a whole lot of issues with this. Uh, what is nice is that they have like a bigger a bigger selection. Like the, the images are bigger, and they show off more of the game. I mean, you know, they got Skyrim coming out on uh, November 17th, Xenoblade. Uh, Siberia, which actually, this game looked really, really good. I didn't play the original, but it looked good. A farming simulator, for those interested. Uh, Monopoly. I really want Monopoly. 
And I know it kind of sucks that it comes out a few days after Mario Odyssey. But God, I love a good a good Monopoly game. Um, just just a lot of fun here uh, in terms of oh, there's the original Siberia. It must be releasing the same day. I assume no, it does not release the same day. Interesting. Uh, there's Fire Emblem Warriors, which we all know comes out in a few days. But yeah, uh, in general, I like this. Now, one thing I wish they would do is take some of the coming soon. So the default thing when you load up your eShop, it's recent releases that comes out. I wouldn't mind if they had a row of coming soon uh, with a selection for view all at the top. Because I think some people like to pre-order and some of the games can be pre-loaded. And if the games are available for, for pre-load, I, I feel like they should be up there as extra advertising and let people know about the, the coming soon. Obviously, you have your enter code where you enter download codes or eShop codes and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the games on sale section is my favorite section just because it's very clear what it is. There can be 50 games on sale. This is where you're going to go to find them, and it's an easy way to do it. But here's the deal. Let's say I want to find the original Snipper Clips. It's not here in the recent releases. It's not in the games on sale section because it's not on sale. Uh, it is not in the bestseller section. It's not in the coming soon section. Where do I go to view all of the games in the eShop? Can I even organize it? Well, kind of. But you have to go to recent releases. This is what's so confusing about this, right? There's no view all indie games or select genre or anything like that. So go to, you go to recent releases. You have to go all the way to the bottom. Select view all. Once you get into here, you can start organizing. You can go by price. You can go by genre. Now, what I wish you could do is go by, like, release year or month or day. Uh, you can go up here and go new to old. So you can go down here and go old to new. Now, this would be the quickest way to find Snipper Clips because it's right there. But I had to go into a sub-menu to even gain access to this. I feel like the menu to view all games and organize stuff should be over there on the left or somewhere in the main area, not at the very bottom of recent releases to get here. There's literally no other way to get here outside of that. Now, from here, you can, it's got all your normal filters. You've got your arcade games and your fighting games and yada, yada, yada. There's actually more fighting games on here than I thought and I realized. Um, oh yes, yeah, Astro Bears. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, the, this works fine. Uh, it's just not ideal. I almost wish that they would Netflix it up a little bit. And what I mean by is, if you ever look at the index of Netflix, you'll see here's the most recent releases. There'll be a row, a scrollable row. So let's go back here. So instead of scrolling down like this. They could have these 20 games right here, recent releases, and then you just keep going to the right, which you can't do here, and have 20 games. And then you could have, uh, in, instead of having like bestsellers down there, you could have bestsellers on the next row right here. And then you have the, the top 15 bestsellers. Okay, and then right below that, you start picking out genres that the that the eShop smartly figures out that you enjoy based on purchase history. So you know, it might have like the basic action, then RPG, then adventure, and puzzle, and fighting, or whatever. But over time, as you purchase games, it'll be like, okay, cool. So we notice that you purchase a lot of action games. So let's make action games right here that you can scroll over. Well, we notice you purchase a, lo a lot of RPGs. So let's put RPG games and you here and you can scroll over. And then, of course, you have to have a section that has like top suggested games. So where it takes games based on, you know, that are, that are, are user reviews or based on the titles that you liked and that maybe you've reviewed in the past which by the way there's no user reviews i, I don't understand how nintendo uh, had a better eShop on wii u when it comes to this stuff than they do on switch especially with how clean the switch's ui is like this is very clean but man could it be better and they could add in a slew of that that kind of netflix like stuff that kind of user rated stuff that, that kind of ability to tailor the content to you and suggest games based on that now obviously that opens up a system for abuse nintendo could clearly be like oh we noticed you played mario plus robin's kingdom battle snipper clips just dance we're going to suggest to you you buy mario odyssey instead of suggesting to you maybe that you buy Star you know stardew valley or something or golf story uh there's obviously a tendency that nintendo might favor their own content just like netflix favors their own in-house shows they're going to suggest their in-house shows to you pretty often over uh other networks that they work with but they will still suggest those networks as well those shows will be right next to the netflix shows and likewise even if i 
you know, Odyssey as an example, or Breath of the Wild as an example, was the first game suggested, there would be other games next to it, including indie and AAA. So, you know, sports titles. I mean, I, can I even organize my sports? I can't even remember if there's a sports section. Let's go view all genre. Do they have sports? They have racing. Oh, they do have sports. Just curious how many there. So we got, well, I guess it's an RPG and a sports. So there you go, <laughs> NBA 2K18 with three slots. Gotta love that. RBI Baseball, Mini Golf, not a ton of sports games. But, I mean, they could suggest all these games to me because I purchased NBA 2K18 and Golf Story. So then they could suggest FIFA to me and RBI Baseball and Infinite Mini Golf, which is 30% off, and Ultra Hyperball. I feel like the eShop is kind of a shell right now. And I think you guys understand what I mean when I say that. It, it really just feels like this is something that the, the very bare bones, quickest thing they could slap together. Um, and it, it can be done better. But, again, we're just talking about this today because they did bring the games on sale section, which I think is essential in my honest opinion. But you guys let me know what you think about the eShop in the comments below, what you guys would do to improve it. Um, obviously, I brought up my ideas and how I would prefer it to be used. But if you have your own unique ideas, please let me know because I feel like while it might seem like a small thing, I think the eShop's a big deal. And as we get to Nintendo charging for online and potentially expanding the eShop and offering more sales, and we're getting to more and more game releases because I showed you how to quickly find, like, snipper clips, but it's not as hard, easy to find something that, like, oh, let's say it came out in July. I mean, if you go by latest or you go by oldest to newest or newest to oldest, you're still not going to exactly find that game you're looking for. And that has, I mean, think about the visibility. That sucks. Whereas I think that Netflix likes this actually will increase the visibility of these things for a lot longer period of time which is a benefit to gamers and to game developers i feel like uh indie games in particular are going to get overlooked very quickly on the eShop. anyways folks i'm nathaniel rofajance from nintendo prime if you like this video you know what to do and if you dislike this video hit that dislike button subscribe for more content and i will catch you in the next one